We have here a 2011 Volkswagen Jetta Wagon TDI and the customer had a whole series of complaints and a story. Uh, been to the dealer, blah blah blah. But here's where we're at right now. This nipple was broken probably by the dealers, what I understand. So he had a flashing glow plug light and a trouble code P00AF which generally refers to the actuator being stuck. I got a video on that if you want to watch that it's a link to it up in the cards. But replacing the vac getting the vacuum hooked back up by, by replacing the vacuum line uh, solved that issue. But he still is getting some trouble codes and we've done some basic checks. Uh, let me show you just want to point out that with the trouble codes we have now, the glow plug light is flashing. Although the check engine light isn't currently on, it'll probably come on in just a moment or two. Okay, I'm in the car now, and we're going to get the trouble codes out of this. Understand we have done some other stuff to it that repaired that vacuum line and cleared the codes. And uh, these are the codes that reoccurred. I don't. We tried to take it on a drive, but the thing is just so underpowered. There's no way we can drive it. I mean, we can we can make it around the block, but we basically pulled out of the parking lot and then turned by basically right back around and came back into the parking lot because it's very underpowered. So here's the codes we have. And we have P0544, sensor for exhaust temp, bank one, circuit malfunction. I did a, a video on that before. If you want to watch that video, you can look up in the cards there and I will. Uh, you can see a video on diagnosing and fixing that. We actually have done some tests on that. I forgot it was in there, but we've done some tests on that and it needs a sensor just like the one in the video. Um, and then PO1592, altitude, altitude sensor or boost pressure sensor, implausible correlation. And we have oxygen sensor, B1, sensor 1, heating circuit. Um, being a heating circuit problem that might just need an oxygen sensor, I don't really know. And, and we're mostly concerned with the power problem on this car. So we might be ignoring that one for now. And then a second instance of the sensor code. So for now, with the boost problem, we're looking at this code right here. Now we did have a P00AF code when the vacuum was di disconnected because of that broke vacuum fitting that I showed earlier in the video, uh, but that seems to be gone with our um, vacuum repair. So I think the best uh, course of action is to drive the car and graph boost. So let's... Um, we'll, uh, Done. go back, go to measuring blocks, group 11, in order to graph boost. And right off the bat, there's a big discrepancy here. Here's what boost is expected to be, and here's what it is. Now, okay, the turbo can't make boost at idle as we're sitting here right now. The car is running, but we can't make boost while we're sitting at idle. And it's, it needs fuel and RPM, and there's not very much fuel being injected, and there's not much RPM at idle. So this is another. This is a right off the bat. That's that could be our problem. It's showing almost full boost. It's showing 2,400 millibar, and it should be something along those lines right there. It almost seems pointless to graph boost, but if we, if we did if we did graph it, it'd be like maxed out. Um, so here, here's our yellow yellow field, and our um, there's our yellow line. It's just barely showing up there. Let me change the scaling just a bit. Uh, so we'll click the yellow to change the scaling on it, and we'll just change this to uh, 2600. And then you have to click the other box. You can't hit enter. So there's our... Uh, so there's our yellow line up there, and uh, obviously that's like max boost right now. So I think we need to do some electrical tests at the sensor. Um, could be as simple as a bad map sensor. Funny part of the story, customer already bought a map sensor. He, he ordered one off the internet. He, he said it was a Bosch branded sensor, 
and he asked the dealership to install it for him. And remember, the dealership was who broke the vacuum line, at least that's what we've come to the conclusion of anyway. So despite the fact that he's got a new map sensor, it still has the... So maybe this has a wiring problem. So we'll, I guess we'll get the car up on the rack and take a good look. The map sensor is in a terrible location on these cars. Very hard to get at, very hard to back probe, very hard to test. Um, but it's not for me to wonder why, it's just for me to do or die. Get on the rack here, I'm driving. I'm driving! Down here is the map sensor. As you can see, it's a little hard to get to. And, okay, got interrupted, but here we go again. So, from memory, that wire runs around, down through here, goes over underneath the breather box, and on the front of the transmission cover, there's a transmission pan, it's on the front, and it there is some clips and brackets, and the... Uh, all the wires of the map sensor connect on the front of the transmission pan and that's in that other video that I mentioned earlier that car was crashed in the front and I think that was why the uh, wiring was damaged and honestly there's a un unusual gap here a gap here uh, this piece of trim is missing right here so this oh look at that this is broken right here so this car has been hit in the front, so maybe we have the same issue with the wiring uh, failed in this area. And maybe we can fix it uh, without putting a sensor in there. That sensor is really hard to change where it's at. Um, I'll pull this breather out and we'll take a look there, see if we can do some testing, see what it shows. Okay, down here in this area is where the, the thing clips. I've pulled it out of here. Uh, you know, it clips on the front of the transmission cover. I pulled it out of here in order to do some testing on it. Now, one good test to do to look for a broken wire would be to unplug it and ohm check between here and there. And uh, that's difficult to do, though, because it's very difficult to get that unplugged. Uh, the way it seems, the way I would unplug this is have one guy underneath the car reach up with a scribe to release the latch and another guy up here to pull on the wires with... Uh, needle nose pliers in order to unplug it. So I'm going to try and avoid doing that if I can and we're going to do the testing here and let's see here let's get my multimeter and some back probes and see what we can do. Here is the schematic for our map sensor and you can see our map sensor has one, two, three, four wires so what you end up with is you have an intake air temperature sensor and the map sensor built into this device and so the, you can see the intake air temperature sensor is hooked to the brown wire, which is normally a ground, but that brown wire also provides a ground for the map sensor. And so what you end up with is just a three-wire sensor, one, two, three, and that's power, ground, and signal return, the power usually being five volts, and an intake air temperature sensor, which basically just uses that ground and this wire inputs to the computer. Let's go over to our car and see if we have the right voltages on our wires. Okay, so I have the key on, and I'm going to uh, back probe these wires. And based on the schematic, of course, I'm assuming the brown one is a ground. So I am don't think you can see the meter from there. Maybe I'll put it right here. Well, there you can see the meter, but you can't see the connector. How about there? Well, there you can see the meter, but just nothing, nothing but a glare. There we go. Okay, so I have the key on, and I'm going to back probe these wires and see what we got here. And so based on the schematic, our, I would assume our brown is the ground, and there's no voltage on the ground. We could load test that, but it goes to the computer. If I remember correctly, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to assume it's okay for now. We'll keep that in the back of our mind. Then we back probe the yellow one, and... And of course the schematic shows yellow one is our air intake temperature sensor wire and it shows 1.8 volts. 
I'm not concerned with that because we don't have a problem there. And then we have the gray and black. And that's probably our 5 volt reference. So that leaves our purple one to be our signal return. And it shows 3.95 volts. So that 3.95 volts seems to be that the maximum range. Understand that if there's a ground on the sensor, the, the zero volts would be the minimum volts that sensor could output. And if it has a 5 volt reference, then 5 volts is the maximum that sensor can output. So 3.9 is pretty much the maximum. So if it's outputting the maximum signal, number one, we know the wire isn't broke between this connector and the MAP sensor. The wire could still be broke going back, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's like a maximum signal. That would explain why we have the graph and the field for uh, our boost sensor showing like a maximum millibar reading. I think it was 2,500. So what I think I want to do is unplug this and see if there's a reaction on the scan tool. So let me get connected to the scan tool. Okay, we'll get VAGCOM going and try and get into our measuring blocks and then we'll unplug it and see what the sensor shows then. Measuring blocks, and that was 11, and it's still showing 2.6 millibar. Oh, I'm sorry, it's still showing 2516 millibar. And so let's unplug it and see what happens. There, I've unplugged it. And now with it unplugged, it shows 2.1 millibar. And now with it unplugged, it shows 2190 millibar instead of 25. Now, I really think that's a default. Um, I think that's the, the signal being high and it changing when I unplugged it is enough information to uh, recommend a sensor at this point. Okay, I've put the harness back into the clip where it clips in front of the D on the front of the DSG transmission because you definitely don't want it in sticking into the fan and rubbing a hole in it. So uh, we'll get that sensor changed and we'll do some more video. We have received the pressure sensor from Volkswagen. There's a part number if you need it. And Bob's going to get this installed. Well, here's our new sensor versus our old sensor. This is the old sensor. He did say he had this replaced. He said he bought a Bosch one off the internet, and this is our new one from Volkswagen. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't know. But uh, we'll get the OEM one on there, and hopefully it'll fix it. Bob has put the new MAP sensor down in there. He has not put everything back together. We're going to verify it's fixed. And so we go over to the computer here. Obviously, we still have the exhaust temperature sensor code. We haven't done any repairs to that. The customer's not allowing us to fix that. Uh, he thinks he can fix it himself, or possibly he's going to do some other <clears throat> repair that I won't mention. There's our altitude slash boost sensor code. I'm going to clear. And we're going to go back in and double check. Sensor for exhaust temperature and mass airflow. So that did make our map sensor code go away. Let's see if our signal coming out of it is appropriate on group 11. And now our millibar reading is 968, which is very close to our actual reading. Before we had 2600 millibar or maybe 2100 millibar some of the time. Uh, so I think this is going to be a good fix. I'm going to have Bob put it the rest of the way back together, and uh, we'll go drive it in graph boost. Okay, I'm getting ready to road test this Jetta that we put the MAP sensor on. We should probably clear codes before we drive it because we did trigger some uh, mass airflow sensor trouble code. We'll clear and see what reoccurs. I assume the exhaust gas temperature sensor trouble code is going to reoccur, and it did. Uh, we'll drive the car and see if anything else reoccurs. Uh, I did just notice the 
Glow plugs light is flashing, so we'll uh, take some video of that with our camera. There. We'll take a video of that with our camera, and there's the glow plug light flashing due to the exhaust gas temperature sensor trouble code. Let's go back in and verify. Uh, we'll hit done, go back, make sure no map sensor codes are there. And as we go back in, we now only have the code for the exhaust gas temperature sensor. Yet our light is still flashing. We'll get it road tested and see how good boost works. Okay, I'm super annoyed. I just did a bunch of filming on the laptop like this and the computer gave me a uh, blue screen of death and I lost everything I just recorded so uh, anyway we have road tested the vehicle and boost is working great I had a boost graph but I can't recreate it if I if that file isn't saved and I can't find it I can't recreate it so unfortunately if uh, you're gonna have to trust me that the boost graph was good and I'm going to go in and make sure those uh, map-related trouble codes did not reoccur. And we have a exhaust temp sensor there and another instance of the same code. So we're going to hit done, go back. So if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything from it, be sure and click the like button. And if you want to donate to the continued production of these videos, find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. If you want to watch some more of my videos, I'll post, I'll post one right there and one right there. And don't forget to subscribe right there. Thanks for watching.